In this problem, we're going to calculate the average acceleration a car undergoes when it collides with a solid object. In this case, it's going to be a tree, but it could be a wall, it could be a Jersey barrier. Now, in this case, the coordinate system will look like this. We'll define the positive x direction off to the right and the positive y in the straight upward direction, although we'll be looking strictly at motion in the x direction. Now, in this problem, what's happening is you have a car, and we'll represent that car with this little box, and the car is going to be traveling with some initial velocity in the positive x direction. Now I've defined the positive x direction to be the same direction in which the car is initially traveling. Now this car is traveling at an initial velocity of 65 miles per hour. And then what happens is this car is going to start to make contact with the solid object, the tree or the wall. The car will still have some initial velocity at this point. So the initial velocity of the car will still be 65 miles an hour. But then what happens is over some distance, in this case it's going to be a distance of 0 0.75 meters, the car is going to start to slow down until it eventually comes to a stop or the final velocity at this point is going to be 0 meters per second. Now notice two things. The velocity vector is initially in this direction. Meanwhile, in order for this car to slow down, the car has to accelerate in the opposite direction. That is, the velocity is going to change in the opposite direction in which the car is traveling. Notice this. Notice the velocity vector and the acceleration vector are in opposite directions. That's going to indicate that the car's velocity is going to be changing, or in this case, slowing down. Now, we haven't talked about it yet, but in order to cause an object to slow down, you need to apply a force. So there is going to be a force acting on this car, which is going to be acting in the negative x direction. The force has to slow the car down. And we're going to pick up this topic once we start talking about Newton's second law. But let's take a look at how to go about solving this problem. So to begin with, let's summarize some of the information. We know the initial velocity of this car is 65 miles per hour. Now this is not an SI unit. So the first thing we need to do is convert this over to units of meters per second. So you should know that one mile is equal to 1.61 kilometers. And then one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. So that's my length conversion. That takes me from units of miles all the way over to units of meters. So notice this mile cancels out with that mile. This kilometer cancels out with this kilometer. And you're left with units of length of meters. And the next step is to convert units of hours over to seconds. So you should know one hour has 3,600 seconds. And again, notice this unit of hour cancels out with this unit of hour, and you're left with units of seconds. So you get now units of meters per second. And when you calculate this, you should get 29.1 meters per second. So make sure before you start any problem that you're in SI units, meters per second. Now, our final velocity in this case is going to be zero meters per second. The car collides with a solid object, in this case a tree, and it comes to a stop. The tree provides the force to stop the car. Now the distance over which this car is decelerating is going to be 0 0.75 meters. Now what we're trying to calculate is the acceleration of the car. That is, how fast does the velocity of this car change as it's making a collision with a tree? And in this case, we're going to assume, and in this problem, we're going to assume that the acceleration is constant. That is, the velocity changes at a constant rate. Now, to solve this problem, what you can do is you can say your final velocity squared equals your initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration of the car, which is what we're looking for, times the distance over which the car begins to slow down. Now, the final velocity of this car is zero. The car comes to a rest. So then you have zero equals the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the change in distance. Now the next step that you have to do is take this initial velocity squared term and move it over to the other side. To do that, you need to subtract the initial velocity squared from both sides. And when you do that, what you should end up getting is minus v initial squared equals two times the acceleration, which is what we're looking for, times the distance over which this object's velocity changes. Now, the next step to do is to isolate the acceleration term. And to do that, you need to divide both sides by 2 times delta x. So what you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other side of the equation. And what you should see is this 2 cancels out with this 2. This delta x cancels out with this delta x. And what you're left with is your acceleration equals the negative v initial squared divided by 2 times the change in distance. Now in this case, our initial velocity is 29.1 meters per second. You need to square the entire term. And then you divide by 2 times 0 0.75 meters. 
when you square this term here, what you should get is minus 845 meters squared per second squared. Notice that the units also square. Units act like real numbers, and, you, and they follow the normal rules of multiplication and division. And then you're going to divide this by 2 times 0.75, which works out to be 1.5 meters. And one of the things that you should see is this unit of meter will cancel out with one of these units of meters. And when you do this in your calculator, what you should get is negative 563.3 meters per second squared. And that's going to be your final answer. Now notice the acceleration is very large. And also notice the sign of the acceleration. In this case, you have a negative acceleration. And what that means is, if you go back to the picture of what's happening, is the object's velocity is changing in the opposite direction it is initially tra traveling. So we expected to find an acceleration with a negative number because the acceleration was in the opposite direction of the initial velocity. Now the last part of this problem is to calculate the acceleration as a multiple of the gravitational acceleration. The gravitational acceleration is defined to be 9.8 meters per second squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert negative 563.3 meters per second squared to multiples of gravitational acceleration. So to do that, what you do is you take minus 563.3 meters per second squared, and then what you do is you convert this by dividing it by 9.8 meters per second squared is equivalent to 1 g, and notice that this unit of meters per second squared cancels out with this unit of meter per second squared, and what you get is minus 57.5 g's. And this just gives you the acceleration in multiples of gravitational acceleration. Now in the next session, what we'll do is we'll make a position versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time graph for this problem.